Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. I'm so excited about today's video. I'm also like, I'm not nervous, but I was, it took so long to make it because I wasn't quite sure how to break this video up in a way that will actually be accurate and or be helpful to you. So I hope that I do a good job. Um, as you can tell by the title, this is going to be um, kind of, I wouldn't say it's ranking because it's not going to be that I like certain ones better than others, but I had someone ask me who, whether it's like historical romance beginners or people who just, you know, they want to find historical romances that are a bit steamier or they want them that are less steamier. And so what I tried to do is I took, I don't even know how many authors are on this list. I think I have uh, like 15 to 20 here and kind of set them up in like a tier system based on like little to no steam or if there is steam it's not graphically described and then I um, am kind of working my way up so I'm going to explain how I am segmenting them because maybe to you you consider it steamy by like how many sex scenes are in a book or based on the terms that are used or based on subject matter it feels like a dark like I there are you know, 101 ways that you can break this up. So I'll go over how I decided upon this and then we'll go about diving into the books because I do have about 30 books that I'm going to talk about, some of them in more detail than others because some of them are favorites and others are books that I just, I appreciate the author, but I'm not like feeling it. So I have a lot to say about this but first off welcome to my channel so happy to have you um, I have been making book content for two and a half years now absolutely love it my main focus is romance if you just stumbled across this and one of my first loves and a passionate love of mine is historical romance and a lot of you have found me that way maybe you found me through Outlander maybe you found me through my historical romance recommendations that I've made so long ago <laughs> and I'm just I've read so many more since then and one of the things that I really particularly like is dark romances or steamier historical romances that there's just something about them they just really hit me in an interesting way and a lot of you are always asking for those um so yeah i've done enough blabbering about that i think i'll just go ahead and dive into this so we're gonna start with little to no steam and i'm gonna kind of explain what i mean about that and so we're starting with our first tier which is gonna be little to no steam or, you know, light kind of sexual experiences and just like fun is what I would say about it. To be honest, right, I haven't, like when I was trying to break this down, there was a couple authors that came to mind right away as being in this, that's the thing, I don't want to call, they're not a lower tier, but in the lower steam tier or there is a much bigger focus on the growing relationship. People aren't just jumping into bed with each other. And I haven't read a ton of those. And this was even before I was more focused on darker historicals and such. I just hadn't read a ton that were like, you know, where there's absolutely nothing. But a book I read early, was it this year or last year, um, was The Grand Sophie by Georgette Hare. And so I know that this author a lot of you will be familiar with her. I had never heard of her before um, when this was suggested to me by a viewer. They suggested the Grand Sophie. And I was able to find this at the time I was using still um, audiobook uh, uh, Scribd. And I found it on Scribd, which I ended up with an abridged version and I didn't know that. Um, but I did really enjoy listening to it. This book is super fun. It's about this girl named Sophie who comes to stay with her cousins. Yes, this is a, she falls in love with her cousin, but Jane Austen does that too. And it didn't feel weird in that way. But this family, the oldest son is basically running everything because his dad has been a little irresponsible. So the oldest son um, is kind of running everything. And 
So he's a little taken aback by his cousin coming to stay and kind of upending their family and everything. Um, and so it's this really lovely, this is very funny. Um, Sophie is a really smart, clever woman. She's grown up with her father traveling and now her father wants her to get a husband because he wants her to be taken care of. This is actually like, this isn't a, the dad is like cracking the whip, but he realizes that his daughter is getting older and that he needs to stop being selfish and taking her everywhere with him and help her find a husband. And so he's leaving it up to his relatives to do that for him. And I just really loved it. It was so sweet. Um, she has a pet monkey, which is adorable. And yeah, this book, the love story was just really sweet. And I think part of it too is that something that you'll find with um, some of these books that I'm going to show you is that one of the reason there's like no steam in them, well also because that's the kind of book that she's writing. She's, she's not writing, you know, an erotic historical romance or anything here, is that the story ends once the people get together. Like there's literally their first kiss is at the end of this book. So you can see what I mean by there's a slow build, but the relationship that's being built and like how the two leads like fall for each other, I just thought was so cute. And oh, uh, so I really loved this book. And so even though it didn't have the level of steam that I personally would want in a book like this, I also just thought it was so sweet and I love having a book that I can recommend to everyone without having to make any caveats and I'm not like, okay, how much does this person like these things before I recommend it? Like I would recommend this to any of my romance friends because the romance in it was still just so, like it was so satisfying watching them fall for each other and how it all worked out that I didn't care that I didn't get, you know, time between the sheets with them. So I've heard that this is the only Georgette Hare book that I've read. And I've heard that a lot of her other books are like that too. So this is definitely a Regency. It's very Pride and Prejudice vibes. She's even called like, she's not contemporary, but she also wasn't like super old. Um, so like this one was in 1950. So it's still a historical romance. Um, and she really was seen as like a contemporary Jane author back in the 50s when she was contemporary so and this one was actually like forwarded by Catherine Coulter who I love so there is our lowest level so then the next tier up where in this book you are going to see some sex scenes in them um, you're going to see some fooling around going on although this author does have a varying degree of this um, and for me that's Mary Bello I've heard her name said so many different ways I think I've heard it pronounced Ballow or Below or Balow. I don't know. I love her. Um, I One of my favorite series by her is The Liars Club. Um, and that one I still would consider like a mid-level. The series that I'm currently reading, I'm almost caught up to it. I just have one left, um, is the Westcott series. So this is actually books like five and six, which are the ones I most recently read. And both of these were... Uh, pretty slow burn. One of them, this one was at Enemies to Lovers, where um, it was actually really cute because it was this guy, um, or no, that was this one, sorry. This was an Enemies to Lovers. <laughs> this one is a Christmas one, basically, because there's a wedding that happens around Christmas, and it's actually an older woman, younger man, and they just have this really insane chemistry, but she's actually a widow, and she had kind of like an emotionally abusive husband, and she's looking for another husband. And then there's this like 26 year old. So she's 11, 12 years older than him. And they just have amazing chemistry, but neither of them believes that they could be together because of age gap. And just, she maybe can't have kids anymore, which totally a lie, she's 38, but that was dangerous. Like it was dangerous back then. I mean, childbirth was always dangerous, but um, she definitely isn't the first blush of youth anymore um, but this just had a beautiful slow build and so this was a legit friends to lovers watching their relationship grow and there wasn't even any like kissing until way far into it but I was really taken in by the characters and how they made me feel like I really really loved that and then someone to honor as I said this one was an enemies to lovers and this was about a father who's actually trying to get custody of his child because his wife had cheated on him and left him and then she died and she left her child in the care of her parents and 
they just won't give their granddaughter back to her dad because they'd heard lies that she had said about him. Um, and so it was really touching to see a father who just wants his child back so much. And he's a war hero. And he actually brings home one of the Westcott's and is like taking care of him. And he gets misunderstood as being like a servant because he's out chopping wood a la Captain America in um, uh, Civil War. And she, he has a shirt off and she sees him and is like, oh my God, you must be a servant. You need to wear your clothes. And so she starts bitching him out, the sister of one of the characters. And then she finds out who he is. And so then she just dislikes him because of that. But it's really clear it's because she found him attractive and is kind of shocked that she was so like into him because of that. Um, but again, they have a really beautiful relationship and she know like it ends up being a little bit of a marriage convenience because by marrying into this family um they think that it could help his case so yeah but again these are kind of like mid low level with her and then another of hers this is actually a georgian novel which i haven't read too many of this one so this one takes place in like the 1780s maybe um and this one heartless is about this guy named luke and this woman named anna and Anna is actually, oh, there's a lot to go into this one. But this one does have kind of, um, they get married pretty early on into the story. But this one I think is a good example of there are steam happening, but the way that Mary writes it, it's one of those where like it's not using very graphic terms. We're using pretty flowery terms for the act of love and such like that, which I feel like puts it at a lower steam level because as you're gonna see as I go up this list, one of the ways where I determined where a book fit was based on what kind of like graphic terms or not graphic terms is the author using to explain intercourse, <laughs> which I feel like in this book, that's what we would call it is we would call it intercourse. Like, is this intercourse or is this fucking, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? And I would definitely call this intercourse until it's making love as one of those. And it's one of those where there's a lie that is being said. And so when he finds that out, all the tender feelings that our hero is building just kind of get zapped out. And he's like, okay, well now you are just going to help me produce an heir and that's all that you're going to be to me and it just breaks your heart because you're like oh but she has such tender feelings for you and have you ruined them forever which spoiler alert they haven't but this one is a bit different and it's actually part of like a duology there's one called um silent melody that's about the younger sister of this heroine and she's actually a deaf mute and that book just like tore my heart out. It was amazing. But that one also has very low steam going on. And that one, I wish there had actually been more. But this one, it was like, it's happening, but it's not talked about in overly graphic terms. So I feel like it could be a good middling for you, um, a middling book for you. So, and this one has a very, like this one has a stalker in it. And it's, it was good. It was good. It kept me, like, it kept me going, even though there wasn't some of those other things I really like. I'm putting my books in my book cart as I use them so that I can put them away. I love my book cart, by the way. Sorry, silent plug for this. It's adorable. Okay, then one more author I want to put in kind of the little bit lesser steam tier. And this one, again, I'm putting this one in here not because there is a lack of such scenes, but the way the author writes them is very flowery and very, and I'm not using flowery as a derogative term. Some people use flowery as a derogative term. When you see who this author is, you'll see that is not what I mean. And for me, that's Julie Garwood, who I have only read these two books by her, and they're two of my favorite historical romances I read this year. These are both um, Scottish Mary's English. One of them is the Scottish uh, English woman marries a Scottish man and then I think they both are actually they're just like different but there's the bride um, which the tagline is at the king's command they wed but passion would be their true master and I love this one because 
Both of these are set up to be enemies to lovers. This one definitely has more antagonism from the jump because they are literally being forced by the king into this marriage. This is a very popular book. There is like love happening right from the beginning um, because they get married in the you know very beginning of the book. Um, and so there's sex happening pretty soon on, but it's all like pretty romantic stuff happening. And it's one of those where, oh, I just love this book. I love this copy of this book. I have quite a few copies of The Bride, actually. And I found this one at a used bookstore and it's just beautiful. It has the like gold foil on it. And yeah, this one is about um, Alec and Jamie and... I adore them. I love this. She's also has like nursing capabilities. And so a lot of this made me feel like Outlander, even though it wasn't like time travel or anything. Um, and again, this still is a very romantic, beautiful story without being overly graphic or maybe pushing things further than you are comfortable with is how I feel about this one. And then the secret, this one is a, I, wouldn't totally call it hate to love. I think it's like misunderstanding to love where in this one, they're kind of actively antagonistic towards each other and it makes for some pretty hot scenes, even though being lower on the steam. Whereas this one is about um, Judith and Ian. And, oh man, and this one is about a wonderful woman who's going to help her best friend have her babies and She's an English woman, and so the Scottish don't believe that she will come to help, but she absolutely comes to help. And then as soon as Ian meets her, so this is, again, like it's a misunderstanding to love. Like he doesn't treat her exactly well the first couple times they're interacting, but very quickly he's completely infatuated with her, and she's like not so infatuated, but she is, and she's hiding it behind anger, but she really is just like into him right away but doesn't know it and it's great so i really feel like julie garwood is such a beautiful place to start with historical romance because though she wrote these books in the 80s and early 90s these two books particularly i find no flaw in them i don't know how else to explain that i find no flaw in these books not in how the story is told how the characters are built or how the love happens like Really, I can't wait to read some more of her books. I have them like behind me and I just can't wait to savor them because I love how she tells a story. So, all right. So that for me is what I consider my like the tier where love scenes aren't written explic explicitly, even if they're happening and they're just really sweet most of the time. And now we're going to start edging up a little bit into kind of this next tier where there is more romance happening, but a lot of it is how I would say like you see it. Man, I don't even know how to say it, but I would just call these kind of the next step up. And so that's this tier that I have here. And again, I'll start kind of on the lower end of where I think the steam lies to go up. And again, these authors I'm about to show you, they have vast backlists. They have so many books. And so it's going to vary within the author's own catalog too, like what they write. Um, but specifically here now, I'm going to start with, for this tier, I'm going to start with Sophie Jordan. Now, Sophie Jordan has, I would definitely say that the scenes we do get are maybe written a little the next step more graphically. However, I've read four of her books now. I've read three books from The Rogue Files and her first book ever, which was called um, once Upon a Wedding Night. And both of those, though there was lots of passion happening in people's heads, and by that I mean like in Once Upon a Wedding, the two characters are taught, are thinking about screwing the other person like all the time, especially the man. But there was actually only two love scenes in the whole book, and they were both at like 70% or further into the book. So that definitely to me is like good for people who don't want there to be too much. And then, like, there's The Rogue Files, which this book was this all a flutter when it came out earlier in 2020 because it was about this woman who accidentally took an aphrodisiac and she literally humps a duke against the wall because she's drugged. He's just, here's, 
it's brilliant. Like he's just literally like standing there. Like they have him as the one holding her against the wall, but she literally like <laughs> has him against the wall and like humps his leg because she has been drugged and he's just standing there and he doesn't know that she's drugged, but he also doesn't like do like he doesn't do anything that would be considered like he doesn't physically stop her from doing this to him, but neither does he take advantage of her during the time that she's under this aphrodisiac. But still, um, Sophie Jordan tends to have her sex scenes pushed way further into the book as well as not a lot of them. So there's also, so when the Duke was sleeping, this is about this woman. I absolutely love her dress and I feel like the actress, the, the cover model kind of looks like Gal Gadot. Also, this series is disappointing to me because the first book has a step back, which Sophie Jordan books have a beautiful step backs or back covers. The rest of her series just only has them on the front cover, which kind of makes me sad. Um, but I would just say like with Sophie Jordan that she maybe does have a little bit, um, the terms are a little bit more explicit, but the amount of scenes and what's going on in them is not as um, graphic as some that we're going to get to. So, Sophie Jordan, good option for that. Next, I have a favorite, um, and I am so excited to reread some of these books, not just the Bridgertons with you all, because Bridgerton show is coming, but her other books. So I have Julia Quinn here, okay? So this specifically is the, um, wow, I forgot what this duology is called, but I'm holding a duology. Um, oh, cute. I have stuff in the book. Um, but this one is How to Marry a Marquis, a Marquis, and um, To Catch an Heiress. And so this is a duology. And the way that I would like to describe Julia Quinn is, again, I feel like she does sexual tension that is magnificent. So I'm currently rereading The Duke and I, which I feel like a lot of you might be doing or reading for the first time. And there's just this spark she's able to put in her meat cutes. Um, the meat cute of the Duke and I is adorable. Like when our two characters are meeting each other for the first time, she just already has sexual tension going with them. And she does that all through the Bridgerton series, all through all of her books. But a lot of times we have a really slow burn with that, which is great. I mean, that's how a lot of historicals are going to be, especially in this tier that I'm talking about. I'm going to get into a tier where we have some hot and heavy stuff happening sooner. But there's just a way that Julia writes that is so pleasant. Her books are extremely bingeable. Um, I laugh all the way through them. That's something that I wanted to bring into this tier too, is that maybe they're sexier than some others, but they leave you feeling happy. Like they're not going to bring you down. My top tier is kind of safe for the sexier, grittier, more like gut-wrenching historicals that just really put you through the ringer. But these books just, they make me so happy. So um, a trilogy I really like, I like the Bevel Stroke trilogy by her too. That that begins with, I think, the, uh, Miss Ad the, the Diary of Miss Miranda Cheever. I think I don't have it written in this one because it wasn't written yet. Oh, yes. The Secret Diaries of Miss Miranda Cheever. And then um, there's some other ones in that, as well as her first trilogy ever, which ha is Splendid, Everything in the Moon and Brighter Than the Sun. And then these, this was the duology she wrote after that. Um, so I just really, really love her books. I actually have an entire video dedicated to Julia Quinn. If you're interested in that, you can check out the card. I don't know which side that it's on when I'm filming this, but I did a deep dive of every book that she's ever written, um, and how I feel about that. So if you want to know more about the stories, you can check that out. But Julia Quinn definitely fits in like mid tier for me for steam wise. I have no problem suggesting her to everyone. I don't feel that there's anything in any of them that you wouldn't enjoy. Um, they are, tend to be a little more on the frivolous side. Her books usually aren't hammering any specific like thing into you. They're just pleasant and beautiful. Once in a while they hit you hard. Like the Duke and I hits me pretty hard for some things happening and like when he was wicked. But in general, her books are just very pleasant to read and I have a wonderful time. And there's a reason Julia Quinn stands the test of time for me because she's bloody brilliant, I tell you. That woman, she's bloody, bloody brilliant. 
I just watched a Instagram live with Eloisa James, who we're going to talk about next. Um, and she was talking about Julia on there with my friend Jess from Peace Love Books. And it made me really happy. Um, but yeah, so next we're going to talk about Eloisa James, who I feel like flits the spectrum of this one because I've read some of hers that just immediately have me hot and bothered and other ones that they just kind of have you at a full simmer for a while, okay? So ones I want to talk about here. So I just read Four Nights with the Duke by her. Um, I've been saving a few of her books. I've said this before because I've read her entire backlist except for three books. And those were the books in the rest of the books in the Desperate Duchesses, um, as well as there was one other one that I think was like her very first book that was by a different publisher other than Avon. Um, but Eloisa writes amazing stories. So this one specifically is so interesting. So this is um, about Mia and her kind of sort of like stepbrother. I don't know how else to explain it. I'll explain it this way. So Mia's father and what's his name? Vander, his mother, they had a long standing affair, like for 10 plus years because Vander's father is mentally ill and he was in an asylum off and on most of his adult life. Um, and he was abusive, which Vander doesn't quite understand until he starts looking back and realizing what abuse was. And he has other people in his life point out that like, hey, maybe your mom wasn't being foolish about this. You know, like she was finding happiness where she could find it. But, but so basically these two have known each other for a long time because their parents again had this long standing affair and just a little while ago both of their parents his, her dad and his mom got sick and they died together in bed actually like they both got a disease and they like died together and he has just been continuing his life and she is going through some trouble so she actually has a brother and her brother has a son and her brother died and so her nephew he has a disability he has a crooked foot so he's a limp one of his feet didn't like grow quite right and she is supposed to be his guardian but her brother writes it in the will that unless she gets married within a year of his death then guardianship of her nephew passes on to like the next person in line and so she was all set up to marry someone and then that person disappeared she was jilted at the author altar and so she has information that could ruin vander's life and so she blackmails him into marrying her now her plan is to only marry him for six months which is how long it would take for her to get the guardianship of her nephew and then she would divorce him so he doesn't read this letter that she gives to him. He's just like, you're not going to pick the terms of our marriage. And so he doesn't realize that she never plans to consummate their marriage because the reason this is called Four Nights with the Duke is he decides to be an ass and say that he will only spend four nights a year with her. And she is like, well, screw that because I'm not planning to stay married to you. So I'm not going to need to sleep with you at all. But Vander kind of did that to be mean to her because she's blackmailing him like he's she's blackmailing him and then doesn't realize how much he really really actually wants her to be his wife and wants to sleep with her so this one was really cool this is a hate to love mostly on his side because they she also used to have a crush on him when they were younger and he was kind of mean to her back then. So it's also with a little bit of like a bully romance in a historical romance, as well as they were kind of sort of step siblings, but not because their parents were married, as well as an arranged marriage that she forces him into. So there was so much going on in this, but it is like a kind of a slow build with it. And there isn't, um, but there's some fun scenes in here. Like it's pretty fun. Then another series by hers, the one that's currently going, is The Wilds of Window Castle. And I really love this. This is about, there's like eight kids in this family. It's about a couple who, it was like both of their second marriages. 
because he has a whole brood of kids and he needs a new duchess. This is actually the newest book in the series. It's called My Last Duchess. And she has a kid of her own too. Um, this book is about her kid. The rest of them are about his kids. And they're just great. And again, like her, she, her books are definitely very sexy all the way through, but they're not like overly graphic or like, she does get into some interesting situations for them, but it's not like overly, you know, too much or anything. These are really fun. Then I just have one to talk about for this author because it's I've only read one so far, but I have a couple authors that I'm just like throwing in here for this. So there's Loretta Chase, Lord of Scoundrels. This one's amazing. The sexual tension in this relationship, this is a hate to love. The sexual tension in this is, am is amazing. Like it's bloody brilliant. I love it. There's a reason this book is a favorite. It's so well written. Jessica and Dane are, I just love them. The miscommunications that Dane gets them into are really crazy. And then Jessica will just swoop in and be like, hey, I'm telling you what's happening. Like, you're not communicating with me, but I'm communicating with you. This is what's happening. And I love this. This has a trope that I really love, and that's the heroine falls asleep right after she gets an orgasm. And then the hero can't uh, do anything because he's not an asshole. And I love it because like Dane, instead of just being like, I'm frustrated about that, he gets all pissy about it. And Jessica's like, I'm sorry, like you should have kept me awake. It's not my fault. And I just, I love that, it's adorable. And then um, Celeste Bradley, she, this lady, again, big spectrum of it. So this is, this one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, it is a wounded hero named Ren, and he is he's seriously, like, disfigured. Like, this isn't, uh, you know, of course, because it's a romance novel, we just, he still looks perfectly perfect, but he's actually pretty beat up. And Calliope and her family, they have an accident with their carriage. Um, this is actually the first book in the Wicked Worthingtons, of which there is going to be, like, eight of them. They're still coming out. And anyway, so her family goes in and she like, it doesn't seem like anyone's home because Ren lives alone and she stumbles into like, he just has his treasures just like laying out there. And so she picks up this pearl necklace, which she's wearing in the picture and he catches her and he thinks she's a dream. So he literally just starts making out with her and she is blown away but also is in kind of a daze because she's like oh my god this person is just kissing me and he's saying all these sweet things to her because he's like you're an angel here to save me and then he realizes she's real and that she actually is like wearing his jewels and so her brother who because it was a family that got this happened to walks in and challenges her to a duel or him to a duel for like mauling his sister and calliope realizing that Ren agrees to the duel because he just wants his misery to end because he hates his life and is suicidal, obviously. She agrees to marry him, to save him from dying in this duel. <laughs> and he like agrees to marry her, but once she has earned back the pearls, which each pearl is a sexual favor, but ranging from either a kiss or from letting him massage her back, to getting her to bathe him, um, to eventually, you know, later on, um, he's planning to like, do, like divorce her at the end or, you know, maybe remove himself from the equation. But he, he wants that last little bit of pleasure before he does it anymore. So this gets a bit dark, but it's also fun because Calliope is like, you know what, I'm married to you now and we're going to make it work. And then there's also her family, which she has a family of like inventors and crazy people in her life. Um, her siblings are just bananas um, who are trying to rescue her when really she's not that upset about where she's living anyway. So we love this. Then we'll get to the queen here. Um, we're almost done with this kind of mid-tier that I was talking about where they're definitely sexier but also a little bit lighter. And I have my well-loved, my well-loved uh, Hathaway series. So Lisa Klepez is who I'm talking about here. Again, author who has a very big spectrum, but I would consider her in 
we get to see a fair amount of relations happening in the book. There's still a fair amount of humor, but there is a lot of smoldering glances and touches and hiding behind curtains and in back passages and, I mean, <laughs> Not an innuendo, literal back passages and places. And it all starts off with Mind Till Midnight. I love this book. One of my favorite historicals this year. Beautiful picture. And this is Cam and Amelia. And oh, sweet baby Jesus. Cam is half Rom, half Irish. And he, if you've read the Wallflower series, you saw him in there in Devil in Winter. He used to work at Jennings and he has become independently wealthy over this time by being a manager there and working with um, Sebastian and Evie and stuff like that. And when Amelia comes to London looking for her brother, who has gotten himself into a bit of trouble, um, Cam sees her and is like, oh my gosh, like, you're it for me. And he goes about proving it to her. There is this amazing and sexy, like, Rom, Romani um, tradition uh, that you get to see in both this book and this book where the, uh, the hero or it would be like the love interest would come in and steal the woman for a night and make her his and then bring her home. And Amelia, she does dig in her heels to the marriage part, not to Cam. She likes Cam. She doesn't want any help. And Cam is offering himself in every part of him, his body, his heart, his finances. And Amelia feels like she and her family need to do it on their own. And Cam is like, that's dumb. You should let me help you. And I love it. I absolutely love that. And I just and this book is super sexy. Cam, I'll tell you this. I, I tell people this. Cam is my favorite Lisa Claypass hero. I feel like there are these, you know, there's the people who like Westcliff or uh or Sebastian. There's the people who pick Derek. Um, but for me, I'm a Cam girl all the way down the tracks. All the way down the tracks. He's my man. <laughs> There's just something about him. Derek is great. Derek is great. But he's too broody for me. Okay, this is a side rant. I know. I got a lot of books to still get through. This is a long video. But Cam is that perfect mix of sexy, amazing, and also... Literally, I've read this book so much, it's falling apart, and I need to get a better copy of it. But he's perfect. I, there's not a problem that I have with Kim. And then I picked up the second one to seduce me at sunrise. This is about, um, Kev and Wynn and Kev, he is also too broody for me and a little bit too self-loathing, but I picked these for the steam factor. This one is a friends to lovers and like the soul rending want and need in this book is amazing. And yeah, I would put all of the Lisa's I've read on the line. She's amazing. Pick one, start somewhere. She's great. Um, but definitely brings the steam, but also the story. And then the next author, as we're building, now we're just basically building our way up. I have um, one more that I think still fits in kind of that mid-range. And that's Tessa Dare. Tessa is amazing. She's someone I recommend to people starting historical romances because her books are really bingeable. They're really easy to just fall into. I often suggest Girl Meets Duke. Um, I really, really like the Spindle Cove series as well. Um, she just tells a great story. Um, this one starts off super, wait, this one starts off super fun, super sexy, right off the bat. Another kind of beauty in the beast retelling. Um, I really, really love Emma and this book. They get married pretty much right away. The sexy times start happening right away. Um, and I love it. I love the story being told. Ash is a little bit of a Victorian Batman. I have another character coming up who's a bit of a uh, Batman as well. But I just love it. Her books are very sexy. They're very fun. They're not always light. Like, they're usually hitting on some issues still. But they are still fun. You know, like, she's making a statement, 
but as well as just letting you have a good time. Like she's not beating you over the head with anything, which is something that I always like, you know, I don't mind being beat up the head sometimes. Sometimes we need it, right? Sometimes we need a good smacking around. But when you're in a book to enjoy it, you also just want to enjoy it sometimes. And I would say Tessa will really help you do that. So now we're gonna go up to the final tier. We're still gonna start at the lower end of the final tier, but now we're moving into what I would call the higher steam level and darker themes. So this is where the matrix meets and we're gonna have, yeah, we're gonna have both of those things. Like the story is darker, the sexy time is better, the wording used is gonna be more graphic until we get to the top of the list with some of the self-published historicals that just kind of all the rules go out the window, right? So the first author in this tier that I wanna start with is Lorraine Heath. So this is one of her newest trilogies. There's a newer series still, but this is The Hellions of Havisham. And wow, these books, these were the first Lorraine Heath I've read. I've only read two other of her books, but I own a lot of them and I plan to get to them. I just, you know, there's a lot guys. When you open the book and the author has a list that big, it's tough. But this trilogy is Falling Into Bed with the Duke, The Viscount and the Vixen, and The Earl Takes All. I think I put those in the wrong order. It's The Earl Takes All and The Viscount and the Vixen is the final one, um, which doesn't have a step back and is really sad. But the other two do. This one has a woman in a black dress. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And he looks like a Viking. Mm. It's actually a dark blue, but supposed to be a morning dress so 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 this series starts they it like this one revolves around a sex club which is a sex club where the women have all the power um it's based on a real sex club that existed Lorraine always has a historical note in the back of hers um and this one was based on the Nightingale Club or I mean the Parrot Club the Nightingale Club is the name of it in the book. It's called the Parrot Club, which was set up in the 1850s by three ladies who wanted to be able to meet and share their lovers. Um, and in this story, how it works is a woman can show up in a mask and she picks the gentleman she'll be with and she sets the rules. The men can still decide yes or no if they want to go for it. So we have this man whose name is, um, his name is Ash as well. And he meets this woman there and he like he's a photographer. So he likes to also have some sexy time, but he likes to take pictures of hands and feet and not in a sexual way, even though he like he doesn't have a fetish for feet. He just thinks that they're very beautiful parts of the body. So it's really cool because we get to see him taking photographs. And also we have our heroine, Minerva, who wants to lose her virginity. Um, she's had six seasons and it hasn't happened and so she is looking to lose her virginity and um, unfortunately for her she kind of lets it slip to Ash that she's a virgin and he's like okay well I'm not going to take anyone's virginity because I don't feel comfortable doing that you should you know but I'll teach you some other things and so they go about spending some time together and doing that. And it's really, really great. And then the reason this is called the Hellions of Havisham is that these, um, there's four boys who end up getting raised by this, uh, is it a Duke? Cause he's still alive. Let me double check. I'm not sure. But there, uh, but anyway, this guy, his wife died in childbirth with his son. So there was his son, and then there was these twin boys, and then there was another guy. And those three young men, the one not his son, their parents died in a train accident. And so they were sent to live with this guy, and he raised them as his own children along with his son. But he wasn't all there anymore. Like, he's a little bit kooky. And he's kind of mocked by society and not treated the best. And that leads us into like this third book because we have this woman named Portia who she was scorned by her lover and she's pregnant. And so she agrees to marry this old man who he's actually secretly looking for a wife for his son. So he's not as crazy as he seems. So he's been writing letters to this woman. She agrees to marry him. Well, then he, she gets there and his son, thinking that he's saving his father, says that he will step in and marry her instead. And now she's like, oh, shit, 
I didn't want to take anyone for a fool, right? But she knew that the old man, he already had an heir. Like, this guy was his heir. But now she's marrying him. And so the baby she has, which it will be a, is a bastard, would become the heir to this family. And so now they're stuck in this situation that she didn't mean them to be in. And it's amazing. And then The Earl Takes All is about twin brothers who one of them dies in Africa and the one brother has to pretend to be the other brother so that his pregnant wife back home won't have a miscarriage. Yeah, that book's as complicated as you think. So as you see, um, Lorraine isn't afraid of some, number one, bananas plots. Like all three of these books have plots that I had never read before. Well, maybe the one about the Viscount and the Vixen, like a woman trying to pass off her child, like that happens. Um, and it's so good. And I've heard from, uh, I've heard about like her, her American historicals, like the West, she has uh, Western ones that, that I've heard really great things about. I want to read those as well. But I loved these books. This book, I sobbed ugly freaking tears at the end because it has an epilogue that's an epilogue for like the series as a whole, not just for this book. And I like I could uh, I could bring myself to tears right now thinking about it. It was so beautiful and just perfect. And I've never read Besides Julia Quinn's second epilogues that she wrote for the Bridgerton series, I've never read an epilogue that so perfectly wrapped up a series and just broke me. But her books definitely have more sexy times. They have some interesting sexual situations and they start to have those darker themes that we're talking about. You guys getting tired yet? <laughs> um, going up the dark scale and the sexy scale, we have Jennifer Ashley. Um, with the Mackenzie series. I won't talk too long about this one because if you look up pretty much any uh, of my historical videos, I talk in depth as well as many other booktubers have. But in interest of showing you the darkening scale that I'm showing you, I would put Jennifer Ashley about here. Um, there dark themes in all of the Mackenzie series. We're dealing with addiction and mental illness or not mental illness, things being seen as mental illness that are not. Um, we have a neurodiverse hero in this book. Ian is autistic, but it's still so sexy. Like Ian, Ian brings the heat, man. Ian brings the heat. Um, Lady Isabella's scandalous marriage, the many sins of Lord Cameron. There's also the Duke's perfect wife. And then um, Daniel Mackenzie, I can't remember his title, but all the Mackenzie books in this series are amazing. Um, the Elliot McBride, that one's also very good. Um, I haven't read any others in the series, but I've read six out of the like eight in the series or whatever. But definitely this is where this one fits. Then, oh boy, you know she was coming as well. This is another author that I won't go too far into because I talk about her all the time. And that's Kerrigan Byrne. So we have the Victorian Rebel series. This is the first one. This is the High Women. All of these books have very painful prologues, okay? As soon as you start one of her books, it's going to stab you in the heart and the chest. All of these heroes and most of these heroines have had very difficult lives in the beginning, from sexual assault to abuse, abuse from parents, abuse from, you know, partners, um, death in them. There is this core group of men in this series that they were all in, um, prison together and then they escaped and they became like criminal masterminds in like their specific areas. It's amazing. So yeah, this one's about Dorian Blackwell, who's kind of the head of the London underground. Then we have Christopher Argent, who is, um, oh, the hunter. He's, he's beautiful. He is a assassin and he falls in love with the woman he's sent to kill. And then there's a bunch of books in that series. I have those where are those with that? Those ones are behind me over here. But then there is the newest one in that series, which is called A Dark and Stormy Night. It's also called A Beautiful Stranger because it is the beginning of like she's doing a spinoff series. But there is going to be one more Victorian Rebels book. But this one is actually about the police inspector that we meet in this book that he goes undercover as a Batman like character because he is a his name is Sir Carlton Morley he was given a knighthood for all of the good that he had done 
So this like isn't a member of the gentry. Most of the characters in this series aren't, like one or two of them is. Um, but he is undercover at this brothel and there's this woman named Prudence who she actually like, she finds out that the man she's engaged to has been cheating on her and will probably continue to cheat on her. So she goes to this brothel to divest herself of her virginity and it just so happens that Carlton is there that night and he just can't resist her when she says she wants someone to take her virginity. And then fast forward three months later, it's her wedding day to the guy she's engaged to and she walks into a room and he's been stabbed and she pulls the knife out and he dies and so everyone comes running in and she's holding a bloody knife covered in his blood and not only that she's pregnant with Carlton's child and he's the police inspector sent for it and so he agrees to marry her to keep her and his child safe and then tries to find out if she really did commit the murder or if he will, you know, save her from that. But it was delicious and beautiful. And I loved this book so much. <laughs> and I can't wait for more. And then there's one of her other series, which this is going to be a trilogy. The first two books are out. Um, this book we're actually reading with our um, the Rake Appreciation Society this month. But the first one in the series is How to Love a Duke in 10 Days. Um, and this one is about a girl, again, there is trauma in the beginning of these books. She was raped by her schoolmaster and she murders him. And her two friends and her friend's like servant help her bury the body. And then um, her family, and now it's like 20 years, 10 years later and her family is in trouble. And so she convinces this Duke to marry her. Well, on their wedding night, he realizes she's not a virgin and so he says, okay, well, we're not going to have sex until after you have a period again. And then, but there's all these other things that we can do. Because he just really wants to make sure that any heir that he has would be his. And he doesn't know that she was raped all this time ago. It's a whole big thing. But he's an amazing hero. I know that makes him sound like a jerk. I say this to people, but he's amazing. And then we have All Scott and Bothered. And this is actually about a, a judge who is trying to prove that this one brothel is actually in charge of like child trafficking and child prostitution and there's this woman named Cecilia who so she's the friend of our heroine from this one she has actually just been granted this brothel slash school it's not a brothel he thinks it's a brothel it's a school for women of like all walks of life whether they were prostitutes or not that's why he thinks it's a brothel and so she steps into this role just as the, our hero, Ramsey, is trying to take this place down because he believes that child prostitution is happening there. So he's a very righteous and on his high horse. But when you look at it from his point of view, like he's trying to save children from being sexual slaves. It's just that Cecilia has no idea what he's talking about. And he, she's the one that he's focusing all of his anger on. But he also is extremely attracted to her. And so that's why it's called All Scott and Bothered because it's amazing. Also, Kerrigan Byrne, her books are read by, um, they're read by Derek Perkins, and he does the sexiest Scottish voices, so do yourself a favor and listen to these books, because the sexy time, oops, <laughs> the sexy times and the voices are just going to blow you away. All right, we're getting there. We're kind of, this isn't a full nother teal, uh, tier, but now we're really like stepping into, we're stepping it up even more still. You still with me almost an hour into this video? I love you for being here. I love you for being here. We have Her Ladyship's Companion by Vandaline Collins. I won't say too much of this. This author, as far as I have found, I believe this is an alternate name for her. Someone shared that with me. I can't remember her other name. Um, so I, cause I know she has other books, but she has two books that are connected and they both are about escorts. This one's actually about a male escort and it's a historical. Okay. When one of my readers told me, or one of my viewers told me about this book, I grabbed it so fast. So this is about this woman named Lady Isabella. Um, she lives in the Scottish countryside and she has a horrible husband who, when he comes home, all he does is abuse her and mistreat her. And then she has this cousin 
who suggests that she get a lover. And her cousin takes it one step further and actually purchases Gideon's services for two weeks, for a fortnight. Gideon comes to stay with her. Now he is, like I said, he's a male escort. He's very used to doing this. He gets pimped out regularly. He is a very, quote unquote, high class escort. So he usually has a lot of control over where he goes and what he does, but he does have a madam and she's a bitch. <laughs> but obviously Isabella, she's just been waiting for someone to love her. And so when you're getting that sometimes manufactured, you know, adoration from this man who's being paid to love you and please you, it's only, you know, gonna happen that Isabella is gonna take that in ways that he doesn't necessarily mean but this is where I mean now too I should have said this back with like I think I said that for this tier like we're really getting into more explicit words in this book too you're beginning to see some maybe some more modern terms used for body parts and things like that um, that happens in Kerrigan Byrne and in um, Jennifer Ashley too that's why they're higher up on this tier is that the same acts that you're seeing in other books are used with more graphic terms, which I feel like just puts them higher on what some people are going to be comfortable with reading. So there's this book by her. I haven't read her other one yet, but I own it. And it's about another woman that we've like, I he you hear about her in this one. So that one's about a female escort. And I'm just like more nervous to read it about how it'll be. But I'm also excited because this book was so good it was so good because how is there going to be a happy ending for this like she has a husband still so then we have Scarlet Peckham this is a self-published trilogy I've only read the first one I haven't read these two yet but I own them um, this is a BDSM elements is in the Duke I tempted okay um, this book is about a submissive Duke okay he is a submissive duke. It's amazing. He likes to be controlled. And in the first chapter, we get to see that. We get to see him going to get his um, punishment from his mistress. And he needs to take a wife. And he ends up falling for this woman named Poppy. And Poppy has some of those dominatrix tendencies but she doesn't know what they are or think that they're proper so every time he sees a little bit of that in her she stifles it back because she doesn't think that she should be that type of woman and it's amazing I know this one is about a um, it's about the sister of the duke from that one and she wants to get into a relationship with so with someone um, and he has some he likes some BDSM, so he takes her to see it sometimes, and it's really interesting. And then this one is about a woman who at the brothel where, well, it's not a brothel, at the dungeon where our Duke was seeing a mistress at, there is a woman there who's learning to become a dominatrix, and she falls in love with a preacher named Lieutenant Henry and yeah I want to read that I'm like scared because her books are also like the happy ending is hard to get to <laughs> but I I really loved this book and I need to read the other two but I've been nervous to do it <sighs> then I have to show you Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin this is a historical pirate romance this is self-published this has dubious consent, um, rape in it, very graphic sex scenes, um, uh, certain sex acts that you don't see in other historicals. Um, this book is fantastic. It is one of my favorite books I've read this year. Um, I recommend it to anyone who likes dark romance and historical romance. This is where it meets. Um, I feel like this could be a great place for you to start with a historical romance. If you like dark romance, but don't know if you'll like historical, you should start here. They're also this cover, the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Is it not? It's fantastic. And I love it. I absolutely love Bennett. Um, this is about, this is a love triangle. I'll just admit that it's 
a love triangle between a between Bennett and Priest and Ashley Cutler. Ashley Cutler is a pirate hunter. Um, Bennett and Priest are both pirates. Um, there's some captor captiving happening, and it's fantastic, and you should read it. And the last historical dark, dark romance that I will bring up to you is Sierra Simone's Markham Hall trilogy. Um, I did not write down the name of the book. I just wrote Sierra Simone down. She has this trilogy that is a Jane Eyre retelling. Jane Eyre retelling. BDSM. Dark, fun, sexy times. It's amazing. It's fantastic. It's a trilogy. It really more smushes all together into one. And I love it. I think it is like The Training of Ivy Leafhold is the book, but it's the Markham Hall trilogy by Sierra Simone. I brought this up on a recent live show and like no one had heard of it before. And I was like, guys, it's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. I need to get physical copies of that series so that I can hold them up. But my throat is dead. I need to stop now. But I hope that this was informative. I hope it gave you some ideas. I, you know, I hope this was what you were wanting when you asked for this kind of video. It was a really fun to put together. I love getting to just rant about historical romances. This is fantastic. Um, yeah, these are pretty much the like main authors that I read. I love finding more. I have so many. You've seen my rainbow shelf that I want to try. Um, and these are just a few that I really love and like where I would place them on the steam scale. So Thank you so much for watching this. If you'd like to become a member of the channel and get to see these videos early, as for example, this video that I'm putting out now, um, my, uh, my viewers get to see it. Okay. My channel members get to see this video the day that I create it, instead of you guys who are probably seeing this about a week, in, a week or so after I filmed it. You would definitely check out my channel memberships. I have some really great options there where you get to interact with me more, um, as well as vote on videos or get to see videos early, which is super fun. So, so I want to give a shout out to her, Victoria Marie. Thank you so much for joining. We're so happy to have you. And yeah, thanks so much for watching this, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!